All right, hello and welcome to the Mac Group meeting on social media. So, show of hands, how many of you participate in social media? How many of you don't? That's a better question. That's what I expected. Um, there are lots of reasons why people do, and there are lots of reasons why people don't participate in social media. Uh, before I get into the do's, let's talk about some of the don'ts I hear from people. Uh, one of the don'ts I hear is, well, I don't, I don't uh, care about what you had for lunch, and I don't want to tell you what I had for lunch. Because that's all they see is people talking about what they had for lunch on social media. Uh, I don't want to share my personal life on social media. I don't want to um, be found by <laughs> former classmates, relationships, whatever it might be. Uh, I don't see the benefit of it. Uh, I'd rather talk in person or on the phone. Um, let see if I missed any that I heard. I don't want to be redirected because of a bug in your software so that I can't get to a website. Okay, that's that one just, I hadn't heard. That just happened with Facebook two days ago. Got it. Um, go ahead. I don't want somebody else getting money from advertisers for me. Yes. I don't want someone else getting money from advertisements for me. Okay, what else? Security. Security, good. Any other, other don'ts? They pretty much covered them. Okay. For the bulk of them. Too much information. Right. Too much information out there on me. Okay. Yeah. I think there's there around once stuff gets on that, it's almost impossible to take it off. Yep, yeah, good point. Once you put something up, it's up. It's up. All right. So those are all good, valid concerns. I'm not going to argue with any of them. I'm not going to argue at all. Social media is one of those things where it's a personal decision. You either decide to do it or don't. It's, and quite frankly, I really don't care. <laughs> I really don't care if you do or don't. I don't gain anything from you doing it. I don't lose anything if you don't. Uh, social media for me has always been one of those things that I've actually been, you know, someone drug me into it, meaning something I wanted to see or take part in was on a social media site. And therefore I had to get on the site to take, to either see that thing I wanted to see or uh, participate. Um, I remember when I first started using Facebook, I thought, this is going to be great. I'll have my friend, my friends <laughs> and family and I'll be able to share photos and they're already all there and it'll be great. And then I remember I started getting friend, friend requests, which is a Facebook thing, from people that I didn't know. And my queue of requests just grew and grew and grew because I, I didn't want to be rude and say no, <laughs> but at the same time, I didn't want to say yes either. So I just kind of like out of sight, out of mind, ignored them for a while. Until I just couldn't ignore them anymore, and then I finally just said, okay, okay, I'm a public figure. People want to be my friend on Facebook, even if I don't know them. I'll accept them, and I just can't use this the way I thought I would be able to use it. I just gave up. And so Facebook, for me, at that point, became this thing that I really never posted anything personal on. It was just, hey, I'm going to be at this seminar teaching this thing on this day, public knowledge that I would want you to know about anyway. And... I was kind of actually disappointed that I wouldn't have a private social media network that I could be a part of that I could just work with friends and family on. And of course, I could have just set up a fictitious account that no one would actually know it's me except the people I told, and therefore no one would try and friend me that wasn't actually my friend. Or I could have just said, you know, no, you can't be my friend, I don't know you. Um, but then that's not being very social. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I temporarily at the time gave up and just accepted everyone who requested me and just didn't post anything personal. And then I discovered a feature, it had, I, don't, I don't know how long it had been on Facebook, but I, when I discovered it, I said, this solves my problem. Facebook has a feature called List, L-I-S-T-S. So you can put someone, you can create lists and put someone on those lists, put your friends on the list, and then share information to specific lists. 
so for, or have photo albums that are shared to specific lists. Solved my problem. I created a family list, added all my family members that were on Facebook to that list, and only share family things to the people on that list. So if you're a Facebook friend of mine and you are not in my family, you'll never see those things that I post. What about friends of those people? Then they, that's up to them. And if their security is lousy? Then that's up to them. Again, I'm not arguing. Security is a lousy thing on any internet service. It can always be compromised. But in that case, I'm still not putting up something that is so private that I wouldn't want, if a friend shared it with their friend, I'd be in trouble. So I, I, I don't ever, in other words, I try not to put, post something I will regret, <laughs> is the way I look at it. Um, and that gets back to the, what, you know, the people that say, well, I don't care what you eat for lunch and I don't want to tell you what I ate for lunch. That's up to you. If you don't want to post what you ate for lunch, then don't. If you don't want to post a picture of your kids, don't. If you don't want to say where you live, by all means, don't. So what you put on social media is up to you and no one else. You don't ever have to post anything you don't want anyone to see. Now, how many of you have children or family members that are young, let's say under the age of 21 on social media? Should probably be just about everybody. You either have family or you have kids that are on social media. This is a problem for you as a parent or guardian or concerned family member as well. Because kids don't get it. They'll post anything on social media, including where you live <laughs> without your knowledge. So I'm just I'm going kind of out of order for a moment, but I just want, since I'm thinking about this, I'm going to go ahead and show these. Uh, images. Um, here's one of my favorite ones. Kid siphoning gas out of a police car, giving the finger while doing it. Oh, I got one. And of course, he got arrested. No. Oh, picture. The car has a number on it. <laughs> and the location, I mean, the city that the car is from. It probably wasn't too hard to figure out who this kid was, and he got arrested. So this is a dumb prank. Thought he was being cool. And look what happened. Here's another one of my favorite ones. I see that all the time. Now, could be tobacco. Could be. But no matter what it is, that picture, once it got posted, is out there forever. She can delete it two seconds after she posted it. But her friends or whoever has seen it, like I saw it, and captured it and saved it, I have it forever. I have it as long as I want it now. So this, again, gets back into the you post what you want, and if you post stupid things, then that's your fault. No one begged you to do that. Now, let's say there's no crime being committed here for a second. What this person doesn't realize is that employers and colleges check your social media accounts out before they hire you now. <coughs> and they look at whatever you've got posted that you let them look at. So people that do these kinds of things that they think are fun when they're 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, whatever age there are, it will come back to bite you or them later. When they're sitting in that job interview and those pictures are placed on the table. Yeah. If they even made it to the interview. <laughs> you know, because they probably never even made it to the interview. Terry, what about the companies that you uh, read about on the internet that claim they can clean up such things? There's no such thing. 
There's no such thing of, I can clean up your profile for you. Yeah, you can probably go delete all the things that you probably, that I shouldn't have up there, but you can't take back what other people have grabbed from what I had up there. There's no way to get that back. Um, so, they're just like anything, they're do's and don'ts. It, it, think prior to the internet. What was social media before the internet? Well, I'm answering. I'm asking the question first. What was social media before the internet? Hmm? Photos. Well, before the internet, what were you doing? You're going out to parties, bars, events, taking pictures, doing things. Right. And. Granted, it wasn't as, as, as easy to spread it around the world, but certainly someone could post a picture of you in the newspaper, of you doing some ridiculous thing. So the rules don't change just because the media has. Don't do stupid things, no matter what the media is, whether it's you at a party getting snapped with a Polaroid camera, or you at a party getting snapped with a digital camera and being posted on Facebook. Same thing, just don't do it if you don't want the world to see it. All right, you have a question. Well, I, I don't want to take the discussion back too far, but, um, but maybe this will reinforce your point. You said you can't take back what other people have grabbed. Mm -hmm. Does that mean if they didn't grab it, it could be gone? Or is it there? I mean, where is it stored? Okay, well, I, I look at it this way. While you can post a picture and delete it two seconds later, that picture is still on the servers of whatever social media account you posted it to. And, well, it's up to them and their terms of agreement. And they even then, if they have terms of agreement that say they won't keep it forever, you can't prove that they don't. So that's what I mean by forever. So Facebook, I'm sure if you read their terms of agreement, because they keep changing them, based on being sued and, and, and uh, customer feedback. But the point is, there's probably something in there now that says, we won't, once you delete your photo, we will delete it too. Prove it. Yeah. How do I know you deleted it? So I don't, I don't have faith that once I put something up, even if I go back and delete it, that it isn't still out there somewhere. So just don't put it up. All right, now with that said, I've given, you all, I've given you a lot of the scary things about why you shouldn't be on social media already, or, or you've given me some. Uh, social media can be a very useful tool if used right, just like any other tool can be a useful tool or detrimental tool if used right or wrong. Um, with that said, if I look back at my own social media history as far as... Um, personal and professional. I use it probably 80% professionally now and 20% socially or personally. And that is that I have literally thousands of followers on various social media sites that look for me to say something. <laughs> and they're looking for me usually to say something insightful. And quite frankly, I don't have something insightful to say every day. <laughs> Maybe not even every week. But I have followers that fo want to follow what I have to say. And that's from the business aspect of it that I enjoy. From the personal aspect, same family, same friends I've always had. And again, we share things back and forth, but that's probably at a minimum now compared to when I first started. Just because I don't have anything, a lot new to share with them on a regular basis. Just like I don't have a lot of insightful things to say on a regular basis either. So let's, uh, let's go through the various networks. Let me con compare and contrast. We'll talk about the do's, we already talked about a lot of the do's and don'ts, but just so you get a feel for what's what. Now, before I even do that, I wrote an article on my blog um, back in 2011. So it's coming up on a second year anniversary this week. And my blog post was titled, is Facebook the new dot com? And it was from an observation. I had just watched the Super Bowl of that year, 
And of course, half, half of the fun of watching the Super Bowl is not the game, but the ads. And when I was watching many of the ads from these, again, ads on the Super Bowl, a couple million dollars to four million to five million dollars per 30 second spot or 15 second spot. These are companies that aren't broke. They're spending millions and millions of dollars for their brand to be seen on the Super Bowl. But yet, I noticed a trend. Instead of sending you to their corporate website after spending $5 million, they sent you to their Facebook page. They didn't send you to Pepsi.com alone. It was Pepsi.com slash Facebook. Gerber. Facebook.com slash Gerber. Carnival Cruises. Facebook.com slash Carnival. These are all screenshots from the ads that ran that year. This was an interview uh, with Janet Jackson on Dateline NBC. But where did they send you to learn more? Facebook.com slash Dateline NBC. Now, before I get down to those comments, it got me thinking, why are these companies so eager to get you to go to their Facebook and now Twitter sites as opposed to their own multi-thousand or multi-million dollar corporate websites that they invest in? They can gather more from the corporate site. They control it. It can be monitored for... Uh Advertising purposes? They can monitor their corporate site better than they can monitor anything else. They control it. But it's Facebook, they can keep sending you stuff where if you're on just their website, you can oh, just sure. go off. That's one. I'll get to that one in a moment. Go on. Crowd mentality. It helps. Crowd mentality. It's a reinforcement for others. People know their site is totally controlled by them, but here they get to see what other people are thinking. If I go to facebook.com slash Pepsi, click like, all of my friends are going to find out they're like Pepsi. All right, that's so kind of along the same lines. Yep. From their own website. Anybody else? Why would they want you to go to Facebook instead of their own corporate website? But why would Pepsi put it there if Coke could come back to the next uh, minute or one up on Facebook? Sure, but, but why do they want you to go there? Okay. It's easier to control the content on Facebook. I mean, they can they can paint a whole branding strategy just for that one page without having to dilute their own homepage. Mm, okay, I'll give you a half point point on that one because again, I think they can do whatever they want on their homepage. Stop keeping us in suspense. All right, Maybe stop keeping you in suspense. Know. Okay, so. <laughs> All of you that gave your comments are correct, but there's one more thing you missed. One big thing you missed. People don't wake up every day to go to, to, to Pepsi.com. You don't wake up every day to go to Adobe.com. You don't. You go there when you want to buy something or when there's a problem. You don't go there just to hang out. You just don't. Most corporate websites you don't go to just to hang out on. But you're on Facebook checking your posts and statuses and everything every day. Now, someone mentioned it earlier. I can't remember if it came from that side or this side. The minute you go to that page, if you want to, you can look at it just and, and they will never know it was necessarily you that looked at it. But the minute you click like, on that page that gives you the ability to interact and post comments and say things but then like someone said your friends will know you liked pepsi.com mm -hmm. and they may be tempted to go click on what you like to see it all right so there's potential advertising now let's get back to uh, another reason and it's, it's so funny the way this has come full circle we, we have all complained from time and time and time again over the years. It's harder and harder to talk to someone at a company. You go to most websites now, I dare you find a phone number. 
You might find one, but it's buried. They don't want you calling them. And if you do call, good luck actually speaking to a person. You may eventually get to talk to somebody. But you're either going to wait on hold, go through phone, tree hell, but, and, and sometimes you're just lucky to hit zero, you get there. Other times not. So as a result of everyone cutting back and saying, no phone call, no contact, don't, don't, no, no, we don't want to talk to you. You lose something. You lose contact with your customers. You don't know what your customers want anymore. You don't really know what your customers are having issues with because you you you're not talking to them anymore. You're talking at them. If you're putting up advertisements, you want them to buy your products, you might put up a form or two where people can help themselves if they're having an issue. And you might jump in every now and help out, but you don't want to talk to them anymore. And that has hurt many companies because they no longer build the right products anymore or they no longer talk to their customers anymore and know what to do. So then they have turned to social media as a way to talk to their customers again. As the irony behind that is just, it, it fascinates me. Because you had all this infrastructure to do it the right way. Shut all that down, lay those people off, make, redeploy those people and resources, and now you're coming back full circle where, the, where the, we have job titles now as social media connection or social media person at this company because that person is now responsible for, that's their daily job, monitor Facebook, Twitter, and all these other social media sites to see what our customers are saying. So they're back to wanting to talk to the customers, but again, not necessarily in a direct, from a corporate website standpoint. So when I wrote this post, I took these screenshots, but then I, I went, actually went to the Pepsi page. I wanted to see what, what they had there. And this is the plus and minus to having public opinion. <laughs> now, I give Pepsi credit for not deleting it. That shows me that you're brave enough to hear the truth or hear what people think. That if you will put up a public forum, which Facebook is a public forum, if they click like, they can go say whatever they want. And they can tell you the good and the bad. Yeah, and of course that could be competition, but it could always be competition no matter what the mechanism is. So, um, companies are using social media to get feed, direct feedback from, to, from their customers and in some ways being able to talk to customers. Now, for example, Delta Airlines, which I fly quite often, um, and I, I'm a top tier flyer on your airline and I have a number I can call and talk to a person if I so desire. But I find it faster sometimes to tweet to their address, which is at Delta Assist, and I get a response immediately. If it's not something I need to actually talk back and forth to a person on. So a lot of companies are, again, they have that person who's monitoring social media as their day job. It's faster sometimes to talk to a company via social media these days than it is on the phone. Especially if it's not going to be a long, drawn-out, two-way conversation. So we've come full circle as to why uh, companies are doing this. And the individual perks are speed. I get to talk to a company sometimes faster and not have to wait on hold. Or maybe I could just send them a message and they reply back when they get a chance. But I didn't have to wait for anything on hold in real time. Um, companies are using their social media pages to give stuff away, run contests. So a lot of times I'm just checking out that, you know, what contest they're running. For individuals, the benefits 
and then now I'm talking not com take companies out of the equation for a moment. I'm talking individuals to individuals. The benefits at that point are literally just being social. Now, like I said, I've been on social media pretty much since the early days of Facebook. Not not early, early when it first started, but when it started becoming popular. And I have reconnected with probably two dozen people that I never thought I would ever talk to again, that I didn't mind reconnecting with. That's the difference. <laughs> there are other people that I don't want to reconnect with. <laughs> it's okay if I never hear from them again. But that is, and it's people that I ordinarily probably, like I said, would have never ever found again. People I went to school with, people I graduated with, people I was in the military with, that I would have never ever ever heard from again. So I got that benefit of it. And again, I got the benefit of um, just kind of staying in touch in ways that I don't really want to talk on the phone to these people all the time. And email, yeah, that can kind of work, but it's just easier and faster to do it with social media. For example, if, um, I'll just give a generic example. Went on vacation to Orlando and I want to share my Orlando vacation pics. I could, A, invite you all over to my house and we can watch a slideshow. <laughs> Not likely. Not gonna happen. For all the various reasons. B, all, my, all the folks I have email addresses for, I can email them the individual pictures. That kind of works. But then I'm forcing people, I'm forcing it on people, I'm putting it in your inbox saying, here, look at these pictures or delete them. Or I can post them somewhere and say, go look if you want or not. Now the posting somewhere, and this is, this is a true story. Before I was on Facebook, I was on Flickr, which is a photo sharing, photo um, social media site. And I was really happy with Flickr. I was really happy with being able to put my, my pictures up there, share links, share galleries, and send it out to the folks I wanted to see it. And I was really tr trying to encourage family members to get on Flickr and do the same thing. And it just never caught on with them. I could just never even get them to sign up for the free account, let alone post anything. And then I would get emails from them saying, hey, go look at my pictures. I was like, oh, well, maybe they finally, no, they're not on Flickr, they're on Facebook. So I actually ended up getting a Facebook account because that's where everyone was. That's where the community I was trying to commu communicate was, with was. So um, social media ends up being not only what you share or want to see, but it's also when you're trying to decide which one or which ones to be on, it's really where the community is. Now, case in point, what are the two biggest social media sites? Facebook and Twitter. Facebook and Twitter, absolutely. LinkedIn? The biggest two, Facebook and Twitter. LinkedIn is big, but not one of the biggest two. Um, but which... Which company launched a social media site that's actually a bigger company than those two? Google. Yeah, Google Plus. Google sat out of the social media game for a long time and kind of watched. They watched Facebook, they watched Twitter, and then they finally launched their own. It's called Google Plus. And I, I'll give them credit. The interface for Google Plus is like they literally sat there and said, okay, let's cherry pick the best things from Facebook and let's cherry pick the best things from Twitter and make our network. It's great. From the standpoint of the interface, the way it works, the way it looks, the way it feels. But what's missing? The community. So if I were trying to, I, I like Google Plus better in many ways than Facebook and Twitter, but if I were trying to encourage, hey everyone, come over here, put your pictures and put your stuff up here because I like this better. What are, my success, what are my chances for success? The same as they were with Flickr. Because people are gonna be where they like to be. So while I like 
here let's see while I like the cleanness of Google Plus I do very little interacting on it because my community just isn't there now here's the irony of it I have 24,000 followers on Google Plus and only two or three thousand friends on Facebook and 10,000 followers on Facebook and my on my fan page so I have double the number of people following me on Google Plus than I do on Facebook but that's also double the number of people I don't know <laughs> that are just following me because it was easy to follow I didn't have to accept them or approve them and they're basically just following if I say something that, that I post that they can see but I don't I don't go to Google Plus to communicate. I, it's for me. It's more one way. I go to Google Plus to post something I want everyone to see. I'm going to be at this event, or I just wrote this post, or here's a new video. The kinds of business things I, I post. But interface-wise, feature-wise, it's a better interface. It's a better product. They just haven't won the hearts and minds of everyday people. Now, let's look at Facebook and let's look at Twitter. And we'll go back to Google Plus if we want to. Facebook, I have a love-hate relationship with, like most users. There are things I actually like about it and there are things I can't stand about it. And the one thing I can't stand about it is they're constantly changing it, but not necessarily for the better. It's like they're changing it a lot of times for the sake of just changing it. They don't really, it's like, well, you took away this option, why? It was, there's nothing wrong with it, why would you take that away? Just for the sake of doing it. Now, uh, for those of you who, are, who have never been on Facebook, let me explain the concept. The concept of Facebook is you sign up for free, create an account. Um, they want you to be an individual more so than a business. Uh, they've kind of changed the rules a little bit along the way, but it was mainly for people. And at that point, the way you communicate with other people is you either ask to be someone's friend or someone asks to be your friend. And you either accept or decline. So I created a, even though this is not a person, I created a Mac group Facebook account. And we have, uh, Mac group as a person has 363 friends. Um, we post po photos, obviously, from the meetings, and we, it just automatically syndicates our blog posts and YouTube videos on here as well. So I'm not really on the Mac Group Facebook account doing a lot of talking or interacting with people. It's mainly just a broadcast. Um, but 363 people asked to be our friends. I didn't ask anyone, they asked us. Because they wanted to communicate with Mac Group using this mechanism. Now, if someone does post a question and I happen to catch it and I can answer it, I will. But for the most part, this has just been a one-way thing. And someone just requested us as a friend. Thank you, audience member. <laughs> so, I just got one new friend request for Facebook. And it's for actually, I got one as a suggestion and one as a actual friend request. So Leah Robinson, I, hi. hi, I'm going to confirm her as a friend. She looks friendly, I'll confirm her. But this gives me the opportunity to talk about the list feature, which I've not really implemented on here because I just accept everyone. I don't really, I'm not posting anything personal, I don't care. But let's say this was my personal Facebook and I now wanted to determine what Leah sees. Okay, so I'm going to confirm her. She is now a friend. But before I go any further, I now get the ability to add her to another list because she's already on my friends list now. So if I add her to another list, there, these are kind of, um, actually I did this demo before. So the family one would be, she's a family member. Member, she's a member. Are you a member? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to add her to the members list. And then I create on my personal account a list called people I actually know. 
and no one gets on that list that I don't actually know. In other words, I, I look at someone as I actually know you as if not only have, have we met, but you would be someone, I have your phone number, you have my phone number, I've been to your house, or you've been to mine, or we had the potential to do that. That's someone I actually know. Not just, <coughs> hey, I shook your hand, you gave me a business card, you ended up in my contacts. That, I don't count that as I actually know you. So if this were a person I would actually know, I would mark her as that, as well as a member, and any other list that I want to create. And then any time I get ready to do a post, or add a picture or anything like that, I can come down here and right now if I do a post, it's going out to everyone because it's marked as public. So you don't even have to be a friend to see what I'm about to post now. You can just go to this page and it would show up there. Or I could twirl it down and I could say friends only. So now the only way you would see what I'm about to post is I had to accept your friendship or you accepted mine. So that would mean all friends, whether I know you or not. Or I could say, we scroll down, see all lists, and, sent, and post it, yes, I know, and post it to the people I actually know list. So even though I'm typing, putting a link, putting a photo, whatever it is, the, and I hit post, the only people that would be able to see that would be the people that I put on that list. That's what gave me control and sanity with Facebook. Because let's think about this for a moment. And this, I'm sure, applies to a lot of you. Do I have personal friends? Yep. Do I have family members? Yep. Do I have business associates? Yep. Do I have fans, people that just like my podcast, like my tutorials, whatever? Yep. Do I have... Um, so we did co-workers. Do I have people in my hobby interests, like the other photographers or models or whatever? Yep. So I have all of these different groups of people, depending on how our relationships and how I met them. Your mom. Not anymore. Um, that are all on Facebook and all friending me. So what I might want to post for one group. I may not want the other group to necessarily see, or they don't care. For example, when I post a tech review of this microphone, does my family really care? No, they really don't. So when I do a post like this, it goes to my fan list. Because those are the people that friended me because they're interested in the technology I talk about or the work I do. So I create these lists and I'm very adamant before I add you as a, or as I'm adding you as a friend, I'm putting you on at least one list, if not more, because I want to control what I share with you going forward. Yes, it is. This is con considered as a personal page, even though it's macro feature. Because on my store page, I'm really Correct. Because a business page or a fan page, you're not they look at it as you shouldn't be trying to control who sees it. You're posting it to everyone who liked your page. This is a personal feature. I cheated. I created a person called Mac Group Detroit. First name, last name. They don't want you doing this. They want Mac Group Detroit to be a fan page or a group or something else, not a person. So I'm cheating. You have to belong to Facebook to get to that page? You don't have to belong to Facebook to get to this page, but you would have to belong to, you would have to be a Facebook member to see anything I posted that wasn't public. Or any information I'm sharing that wasn't public. Now by the way, the list aren't just for posts and photo albums. They're for everything. So if we go to our security settings or privacy settings, and I, I can't even tell you what I've edited here or done here because I don't really use this account very often. All right, who can see my stuff? Which friends can see your future posts? And it just remember the last thing I picked. I can change that to whatever. Who can look me up on Facebook? Right now it's everyone. 
you could limit that to just friends, no one, whatever you wanted. Um, do you show up in search engines outside of Facebook, yes or no? So while they have answered the privacy concerns of most people, they don't make it easy. Because you'd have to go through and understand each one of these settings, and there's a bunch more than these three, to really lock Facebook down to only sharing what you want to share with who you want to share it with. So if I go back out, there's security. Um, all the notifications, logins, apps, so forth and so on. If I go to general, I think that's the one I was in. Yeah, who can see um, my email address, my username, so forth and so on. I can narrow each one of these things down. Uh, timeline and tagging, this is one of my favorite ones. Who can add things to my timeline? Right now on Mac Group, I make it personal. I mean, I'm sorry, friends. On my personal one, I think I have it limited to a specific list, like people actually know. I don't let just anyone add something to my um, timeline. Now, speaking of that, you're on Facebook and your friend is on Facebook. You're both at a party. You're incognito. You're not doing anything. You're not posting anything. You're not taking pictures. You're not on Facebook. You're not doing anything. You're just there. But your friend takes your picture. Click. Post it on Facebook, which there, anyone can do that. But then they tag you in it. Now tagging, just like we think of iPhoto or, or Lightroom or whatever, creating keywords, tagging is saying, I'm identifying who's in this photo. If they're on Facebook, because of course they can't tag, well they could, but it doesn't matter. They, they, they really can't tag you if you're not on Facebook already and not one of their friends. So for example, um, post, review posts friends tag you, tag you in before they appear. That was a huge one for me on my personal one. Because people were tagging me in things and it would automatically show up in my timeline for all my friends to see before I even saw it. I might be on a plane for six hours and six hours later I land and it's like, oh my God, I can't believe they posted that and put my name on it. <laughs> so I absolutely changed that setting to, I have to approve it before. I can't control what you do on your timeline, but I can certainly control what happens on mine. So I have to approve it before it shows up on my timeline. Um, let's see, tagging. Also show location where you right and you can again decline so what I'm saying is most of the things that people can do or you can do you can turn off if you don't want but you have to literally go item by item and specify the rules for each item what people can tag you in what they can't tag you in do they have to have your permission first do they you know all of this you have to go through step by step and it's worth doing it's also worth reviewing because not only do they change the interface of the site, they also change the privacy settings from time to time. And they, they're more liberal than you're going to be when it comes to those settings. How does it say, does it come up on your email or something? Is there something for you to review? Yeah, it comes up. Um, I don't think I have it set to go to email, but it comes up in my, um, there's an act, or notifications. It comes up in the notifications that so-and-so tagged you in blah, 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 and you go to a specific page to approve each one or decline each one. So you can hide it from your timeline, which means don't let it show up, but leave it tagged, because you, maybe you don't want to look at it, you don't want your friends look at it, but you don't care if their friends look at it. Or you can untag yourself. Now, that again, you can't you can't stop them from posting the photo, but you can take your name off of it. Once you untag yourself, they can no longer tag you in that photo again. So it's not like they can keep going back and forth and re-tagging you. Once, they, once you untag yourself, that photo, they can't tag you in it again. They can post a new one and tag you, but they can't go back. They can't keep going back and forth on the same photo or same post. Um, now, sometimes people will do this. They will 
propose a friend for you. So in other words, Elizabeth, I don't know, is being proposed, or proposed by Ricardo, who I may or may not know. And I almost 99% of the time click ignore. Because if I don't know the person you're proposing, why would I want to purposely go ask them to be my friend? I, I don't know them, so I'm not going to do it. Uh, and here we'll confirm Sharon. And this is a new thing they just recently started doing. They started asking, hey, do you really know Sharon outside of Facebook? Yes or no? Or do you really know Lee outside of Facebook? Yes or no? So I could say yes. And I could say no. And that's it. So I've answered my friend request for the day. It depends on how you have your, the rest of your privacy set up. Her question was, how careful should you be accepting friends? And I, I gave you this scenario of, I get, I get dozens of requests a day from people I absolutely do not know. They found me, they know my name, they want to be my friend. And I, I have no problem friending them and putting them on the fan list because everything is so locked down to where they can only see what I want them to see anyway. So once you've, got your, once you've mastered your privacy settings, to where you're only sharing the information you want to share with the people you want to share it with, you can accept as many people as you want. But also keep in mind that Facebook puts a limit of 5,000 friends on a personal account. Here's my concern. Employers go on Facebook to check you out. Yep. You've got people tagging you or um, you know, some people just accept all friends so that they have a, a, a large network that they can post to. But we, I don't want somebody to embarrass me So therefore, you should do A, set it up to where you can only, people can, people that tag you, it will only show up on your timeline if you approve it. B, even then, even if I approve it and it shows up on my timeline, I have tags set to only me, meaning I'm the only one that sees it. Even if I approve it. Because if I want other people to see it, then I'll share it. So if you tag me in an embarrassing photo and I laugh and say, yep, that was funny, and I approve it, no one else will see it but me, unless they go to your page. But they won't see it on my page. Can you delete something on the, on the timeline? Sure. You can delete something on the timeline anytime you get ready, on your timeline. Now, you can also report a photo as abusive. Like if someone has photoshopped you into a scenario, and then, even though it's you, but you weren't really there, you can not only untag yourself, but you can report the photo. And Facebook really doesn't ask many questions. They don't go in a back and forth, they just delete it. So if you report a photo as being abusive, they don't really say, well, is it really abusive? They just delete it. So it's like no questions asked. And if you get reported so often, they'll delete your account. With, with this thing of being tagged and, and the other person can post it on their account, mm -hmm. if you're an employer and you're investigating, wouldn't you look at the accounts of people that are your friends to see what they're saying about you or what they're posting about you? If I allow you to see my friends, which I don't. So that's what I mean. If you go to my personal Facebook page and you're not my friend, there's very little you're going to see. You can't see my friends. You can't see posts on my timeline that I don't want you to see. You really can't see my phone number, can't see my email. You really can't see anything. So even if a prospective employer said, I'm going to go check Terry White out on Facebook, and they went right to my page, they're going to see very little. Now, let's say they friend me you know, anonymously as not my, my future employer, but just John Smith wants to be friends with Terry White. Then they're only going to see what I post for my fans. So it's not like some employer is going to sneak up and see things that I didn't want them to see. Unless they just flat out pretended to be someone I thought they were that they weren't. And I added them you know, mistakenly to a list. That's not very hackable. Anything is hackable. I'm never going to say something is not hackable. <laughs> How do you get out of Facebook? How do you get out of Facebook? You can either close your account completely or you can temporarily suspend it. 
Or, but even in that case, like I said, and we talked about this earlier before you got here, even if you close it completely, you and they and you they claim they deleted it. Did they really delete it? Did they really delete all your photos or not? You're speaking with a degree of authority. How many times have you gotten burned or where did you get your information from and can it be shared? I I have not quote unquote been burned, not that I know of, um, on, on social media. Where I've got my information from is watching other people be burned. Oh, and, oh here's, a, here's a good, uh, you just gave me a great thing I forgot to talk about. Let's say you kind of want to see how secure your page is. Like, what can people see or not see? You can, uh, I love this feature they added. You can go into your a little gear thing here on your main page and you can say view as. So when you say view as, you can type in the person's name that you want to view as, or you can go to a specific list that you want to view as. So this is your way of testing what can people see and what can't they see, either on an individual basis or a list basis, or just like what can the public see? Ooh, I don't want them seeing that, go turn that off. So you can do the view as test whenever you want. Go ahead. Nope. P-R-I-V-E-A-C-Y dot com. What it does is it puts a program on your computer that every time you go to one of these social media sites, it flags you and says, here, here, drop, hit this drop down. We will show you what we consider everything you need to do to make yourself secure according hmm. to what you've told us. That's nice. And it will take you straight to that portion of the website that you're on to set your privacy settings. Great. That sounds like a great app. Can you send me the link to that? Uh, www.priveasy.com. Can you send me the link to that? Sure. Thank you. It's not that address because I just looked it up. All right. Okay, so um, Facebook is really about what you share, what you don't share, who you share it with, and how you control your privacy in a nutshell. I check my privacy settings maybe, and of course when I think about it, but maybe on average once a month, just to look and see, make sure everything's still set the way I want it set. And again, even before I go into privacy, I'll just do a quick view as, view as the public, view as a particular person, view as a fan. That way I can see what they're actually seeing and what they're not seeing. Um, as far as what I post, most of it's automated. Uh, when I post from my blog, it automatically goes to my Facebook fan page. When I post um, from Twitter, there's a way I can say, okay, this tweet will also go on Facebook. The only time I'm really ever writing something, like taking the, a time to actually post something, is I just had some crazy thought and I just want to share it. Or I found a funny photo and I want my friends to see it. That's pretty much it. I'm not... I don't spend a lot of time putting content up on Facebook. What's the difference between the business page and the personal page? Okay. Again, Let's do that before we go to Twitter and go ahead. It's the strategy that a lot of kids are using. My kids actually did. When they were getting close to graduation looking for jobs, they basically changed their name, dropped their last name. They used their first and middle names. So both friends could do it, but if they were the searches, if they were applying for positions, they weren't as readily seen. Hmm. Now, the boys, after they got jobs, they made their back up. And they were pretty conservative anyway, as far as what they post to do. And yeah. My Here. daughter now has that, because she is going to be graduating and is now looking for a job, so she has changed to that. What do you think of that strategy? Uh, I think you should take it, up, take it one, one more level up. Here's the, here's the way you test what you're about to post anywhere. Would I be okay if my mom, wife, husband, boss, daughter, son saw this? If the answer is yes, post it. If the answer is no, don't.
Now, uh, one, uh, just a side note to that comment. I'm on most of the popular social media networks. The one that I actually, I, I consider somewhat personal, I mean, I do, I do post, I don't, I, mean, I don't need personal information, but like, I'll post a picture that's kind of a, this is Terry White's brain versus Terry White's profession, that, that kind of personal, like a, a, a stupid joke or something, on, um, what's the site, Instagram. So Instagram, I kind of treat it like, hey, that's my personal photo feed where I can post stupid things. Until last week. You know what happened last week? No, 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 I, I went through all that. And I had it locked, so you can only see the post if you're a friend, if I accept you. My boss wants to be my friend on Instagram. <laughs> Oh, you yeah, already sent me the request sitting right there. I'm like, hmm. Haven't clicked yes on that yet, by the way. <laughs> because I have to decide, okay, if I say yes to him first, I have to go make sure I delete anything I don't want him to see. And second, do I really want him on my Instagram? Because that's the one kind of thing I was keeping as a personal me, not work. So that's, that's another debate you might go through. Can I see this on the internet? Sure. Yeah, you can see this on the internet, but what parts of it you see are up to me. Okay. But like Instagram, like I said, you go to my Instagram page right now, on, even on the web, it just says the speed is locked. You have to request to be a friend to be able to see the photos. So uh, that just brought up an interesting dilemma for me because, again, there's nothing outrageous on there that even if he saw it, I would, you know, that I would care. But it's kind of like, then I'll, I really will have to watch everything I post on there if I say yes. Yeah. So you do have to think about that after the fact, even after they get the job and they go back to using their real name. This doesn't mean their current boss can't go look. That's what I, that's what I meant by adding an extra level. Okay, so the question was, difference between personal and, and business. Go ahead. Oh, I'd say no to any of that stuff. There's really no way to validate it, but at this point, like I said, at the point of, if I know you, you already know my birthday. I don't need to share my birthday with you on Facebook. So that's what I meant by, if I get a request from an app that says, so-and-so would like to add you to their family tree. <laughs> no. <laughs> because you're already family, we already know each other, I don't need to have an app that does that in Facebook. So. I, it's 99.999% of the time I'm declining any app requests. And by the way, let me show you that before we go on to the business thing. These are the ones that came up on the macro page that I have had just looked at today. So this person I don't know invited me to play Happy Land. <laughs> no. <laughs> Turn off. So I will never get a Happy Land request again. So, same thing. TripAdvisor I actually do use, but I'm not using it on the Mac group account, so no. Turn off. No, I don't want to play Lucky 7. Turn off. No, I don't understand your language. Turn off. Um, now, you get this a lot, and this is the one thing I haven't found a way to really block. You'll get requests, not requests, but just someone, one of your friends is posting an event notice and they it shows up in your activity just hey they're having a party they're having an event they're having a, a lecture whatever you're going to see those uh, you don't have to click on it but you are going to see it in your list but like those those four, three applications or four applications i turned off i will never see requests from those again so it's a one time yeah you're going to get annoyed by it that one first time but once you turn it off you'll never see that request again 
And the other one, the one I used to love to turn off when they first gave me the ability to turn off was Farmville. I could not wait to turn that off as fast as I possibly could. Farmville and there was the other one, Mob Boss. My boss. Those were two. Those were like the two most popular games on Facebook, and everyone was playing them and requesting this. No, no, I don't want to play ever. <laughs> Turn off. Done. Um, you can. You can do it on your iPad if you log in with the browser. I don't think you can do it with the app. If you log in with the web browser, you can do it. Okay. So now everything I've talked about to, up to this point is a personal account. Terry White, John Smith, Lou Ann Simpson, whatever. Those are people that are controlling what their friends see or don't see. Now, Facebook has two other types of presence on their social network, pages and groups. So a page, here we'll go to my page. it this way. So I have a page called Terry White Fans. So if you go to Facebook.com slash Terry White Fans, this is my business fan page. So this has nothing to do with me as, as a person per se. No birthdays, family photos, friends, none of that is on here. This is strictly business. This is Videos I'm doing, events I'm going to be at, pictures I want to post of the events or whatever I'm doing, but that's it. So the only thing I share on this page, usually 99% of the time is business related. Now, why? Well, number one, because 10,000 plus people want to see it. But number two, don't think of social networking as something that's always got to be one way. You know my favorite use of social media, which I don't use it often enough to do this? I mean, I don't do it as often as I should. You know what people love to give you? Advice. Their advice or opinion. So the next time you're debating, like, should I get the verbatim disc or the Sony disc? Ask, and you'll get your answer. <laughs> It always, I, I'm fascinated by the level of detail that people are willing to go through to answer your request, your question. Here's, here's one. Let's do this. This is one I've actually been wanting to post. I just hadn't got around to it. Has anyone found any generic, i.e. non-Apple branded lightning cables that actually work. <laughs> yeah, I'm posting that out. Anyone that goes to my page right now, whether you're on Facebook or not, can see it. But the only way you'd be able to answer it is to be on Facebook and click like on my page. Then you can participate. Oh, I'm logged in as Macro. <laughs> That's funny because I was like, how come it didn't come up as me? So Macro posted that on my page. Um, so people will start responding and commenting and posting links and hey, hey, you can get them here or you can't or I haven't found any or I found these and these work pretty good. So that's the whole community aspect of it. That's what social networking should be about. You friended these people or these people follow you and they, yeah, they want to hear what you have to say, but sometimes you probably want to hear what they have to say in the case of Pepsi. What do you think of our Pepsi Max? It tastes like, what did the guy say, barf or whatever? <laughs> now, if enough people say that, I bet you someone's going to be making some changes to the taste of Pepsi Max. But if not, you know, you're always going to have someone that doesn't like, no matter what it is you do, then they won't care. So, um, uh, so now, the differences. With a friend account, you have to accept friends. With a page, people can just go to your page and like it. I don't have, I didn't have to do anything with those 10,000 people. They just came to the page, clicked the like button, now they see anything I post. If they click the like button, they can post um, on that 
feed. They can ask me questions. They can post photos, whatever. I don't have to do anything. It's just self-maintaining. Unless I see something I don't like, which is rare, then I, I'll, I can delete it if I don't want it. Um, and I actually direct people, if you go to my personal page, I even put something in there. Please don't friend request me if I don't actually know you. If you just want to follow what I do, go to my fan page. Because you're going to see more about me here than you are on my personal page, which you won't see anything anyway. Or what I should, or I shouldn't say here, but what I'm doing. So, Stephen J. commented. Klein. Stephen Klein. And if I re re reflow that. Oh, he's still doing it. Lightning cables are for the new iPads and iPhones, the little new connector that Apple came out with. Unlike they got away from the 30 pin connector that they'd used for years. There you go. Here's your answer. Is it yes? Uh, it's a qualified yes. I don't know where it went. That's the other weird thing. Sometimes it's the thing you just posted disappears temporarily. Ah, here it is. Okay, so he found uh, some at Monopress. But that's what typically happens. Now, that, the reason that disappeared is because I didn't post it. My group did. If I had posted that, it would have stayed in my main feed. All right, so any questions about the page versus personal? You can, that's the other thing too, with a page, you can grant administrative rights to more than one person. So I can have like three or four moderators that moderate my page and give them rights to post things and delete things and whatever. Insights. Pardon? Insights. I can't hear you. Insights. Insights. Insights tell you statistics about your page. Uh, let's see, I can't remember where they are. Dun, 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 dun. The insights. I looked. I always have a problem finding it. Oh, because I'm not logged in as me. That's why. Um, I'm logged in as Mac Group, which doesn't administer this page, so I can't see the insights. But the insights give you stats about how many people came to your page, what they liked, what they didn't like, how often, so forth and so on. Does it tell you the screen size of the... I don't think it gets into that level of detail, okay. unlike Google Analytics for a web page. But like, for example, uh, if we go to photos here, this was a photo gallery from, here if we go to albums. This is a photo gallery from my event in San Francisco. I just posted, I don't know, six pictures there from that event for the people that either went or didn't get to go. They got to see what the event looked like. So it's that kind of stuff that I post on my business page. What, what if I have an event that's a professional event for mm -hmm. client and I would like to post it with like a PDF? No, you don't get to post PDFs. You can post the event. So for example, you want to know where I'm going to be next and what I'm going to be doing. If you click on my events page, it lists all my upcoming events. So my next one is, to, is Tuesday, I believe, this week. But you can and post a PDF link, a link to a you PDF. You can post a link to a PDF, but not the actual PDF, yes. Uh, where is it? Oh, there it is. So I'm going to be at the DC area users group. I can see how many people are going. These are people that liked my page that just happened to say they're going to the event. Uh, how many people are maybe and uh, people that are looking at the event can post details they can post comments about it so forth and so on how about video clips from audience? sure you can post video can you, show us you, you would just go back to the page oops went back too far sorry <coughs> i want to go back to yeah, I know, that's the problem. <laughs> it's like I'm trying to do this not as me or as someone. So you would go and instead of posting text, you either post photo and video and then just upload your video. So you put it right on the timeline, just like a... 
Yeah, because otherwise you'd have to post like a link to YouTube in the event if you wanted it to be part of the event posting. So one of the topics that she's talking about, like posting a link to a PDF, where does the PDF reside? The PDF has to be somewhere on the internet for you to post that link. So in other words, Facebook won't let you post attachments, in other words. You have to link it somewhere else and then post that link. I'm wondering about check-in. When someone is out of place and they check in, mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to get people to check into my business page and see who checked in. Is that possible for you? Or? Um, you can get folks to check into your business, but not your page. So if you have a business on the internet, here, let's, uh, let's go back to Macro. And I go to, well, you, know, you can do it from the website. You can click on place. And I can say where I am. It's more popular on a phone. But there's my group Detroit, Farmington Hills. And I can say, having fun at my group Detroit. And then it will show that I personally checked in to that location. And if you manage that location, you'll see who checked in. But it has nothing to do with your page. <coughs> You're letting people know where you are. So here's, here's, a, here's, here's my rule of thumb for check-ins. Why are you checking in, first of all? Uh, you know, so you're really saying, hey, I'm here. <laughs> so if you have a good reason for saying, hey, I'm here, maybe you want to let your friends know where you are. I, if I do check in, I always do it when I'm leaving. <laughs> so instead of doing it when I first get there, I do it when I'm headed out the door. Yeah. There, I got to say I was there, <laughs> but I'm not still there. And, and here's the other thing too, and again, of course I definitely, I would have you secure your privacy settings for your check-ins and locations. Because what, if, you're just, if you're just publicly letting everyone know where you checked in, you're letting criminals know that you're not home. You're letting anyone know that, you, that knows your check-ins that you aren't home. What's the purpose of doing, posting anything is vanity. Or you have a legitimate reason. You're letting a group of people know that you're somewhere. But then I would do it as a list. That's Foursquare. So Foursquare is a social network that is specifically for checking in. And businesses offer coupons and discounts if you check in with their site. But, um, and again, Foursquare, same thing. You have to have friends that followed you on Foursquare that you approved. So I, I, I'm on Foursquare, but I absolutely do not approve anyone that I don't know because I don't want strangers knowing where I am. Yep. You go to post a photo and you say create a photo album and then it will ask you, show me all the pictures you want to post and you go select them all on your hard drive and upload them all at one time. You can add to it after, of course. All right, we spent a lot of time on Facebook and we're running out of time, so let's get to some of the other networks. Um, and Facebook is the biggest one, so it, it takes the most time. Now, if all of that is not your fancy, and for a lot of people it just won't ever be, then you might want to look at Twitter. Twitter is a lot less involved. I like to refer to Twitter as the status updates of Facebook, period. So like when I posted that, hey, anyone know where you can get generic lightning tables? That was a status update. Twitter, you have no photo albums, you have no friends, requests and friends, you have no games, no, no uh, applications to deal with that are trying to get you to do something. It's status updates. That's all it is. Now, your status update can contain a link to a picture that you want someone to see, but there's no albums, there's no photo galleries, there's none of that. So what, what, what's really the attraction to Twitter? 
hearing what people that you admire have to say or that you're interested in what they have to say. So part of my enjoyment of I've got, and this was a true case, I had the Super Bowl on, watching on a big screen, little screen, watching Twitter. Because people were posting the most hilarious things about the Super Bowl while it's going on. So I look at the game, and eh, replay, whatever. I look to see what someone said about it on Twitter. And it was just entertainment. That's all. Also, business reasons, discounts, um, companies tweet contests. Now, Twitter is about, so like I said, there are no friend requests. There's, you don't have to approve anyone. People choose to follow you if they want, or you follow people you want. So, for example, if we go to my Twitter. You can like, block people from sure, you can always block people from most of these networks. <laughs> if someone obnoxious is following you, you can block them. So I have 20,313 followers on Twitter. I'm only following 726. So I'm not following thousands and thousands of people because I don't really care what they have to say. These 726, and I could probably cut it down to maybe 100, <laughs> are the ones that really care about what they have to say. And I want to see what, they're, what they have to say. I've only done, since I've been on Twitter, 10,000 tweets. and. Probably 60% of those were my blog automatically posting a link that I made a post. That's not me typing something of those 10,000. You can join with, with Twitter with whatever, whatever you want. It does not have to be your actual name. It's not as picky as Facebook. They have to follow you. So you have to, here's, okay, so that, let's talk about building a social network. The only reason anyone's gonna follow you on a social network is one of two reasons. They know you, or you say interesting things. I, those 20,000 people don't know me. I don't know them. I would say probably out of that 20,000, I may only know 1,000 of them. But they followed me because I, at some point I posted something, could have been a link to a tutorial, could have been something I said, could have been a blog post, whatever, that someone who did follow me did what's called a retweet. So for example, let's go to, um, Let's go to this, now uh, keep in mind, I'm still logged on as Macroot. So I'm looking at Terry White's feed, but I'm on as Macroot Detroit. And I like this blog post that Terry White did on using your on-camera flash. So Macroot has, I don't know, 300 followers or something like that, maybe 100, I can't remember. I want my followers to see what Terry said. So I click retweet. Now I just tweet it without doing anything else, that post to my followers. And if my followers like it, guess what they're gonna go do? Not only retweet it, but what else? They're gonna follow Terry White. Because they liked it so much that they wanna see what else he has to say. It's weird talking about yourself in the third person. <laughs> so. <laughs> That's how follow, that's how you build followers. How do I start? If I don't you, there's no way to, uh, other than putting your Twitter address on everything you do from here on out. That is the only way to start. There's no. I mean, there are companies supposedly that you can pay and they will get you thousands of followers. But what good is that? These are random people that don't really care what you have to say. They're just following you because they were paid to. Yes. Hashtagging is when anytime you see, um, I just saw one, you see the little um, pound symbol and something after it. That's a hashtag. So what that allows people to do is find tweets that are about a specific subject. So for example, if I were looking for uh, tweets about my event that I just did, 
and I went under the hashtag create now and I do a search. It's going to show me any tweets that have create now in them that someone tagged it that way because they wanted it to be found. When you do your tweet, you just put it in. Hashtag whatever. Hashtag Detroit. Hashtag tennis. Hashtag Mac Macintosh. Hashtag iPad. Whatever you want people to be able to search on. You can have more than one, of course. Go ahead. Do a blog post. Made a, made a blog post. Right. And it automatically came over. And I, and I believe somebody else in my last, uh, last month asked the robo gentleman, can we put it on a calendar that we can then just all get those types of things, those cross feeds? Yep. It would be nice to learn something more about that if, if there's enough interest in it. Okay. Um, in a nutshell, there's a plugin, my, my blog is on uh, an engine called WordPress, which is a popular blogging engine. Word, there's a WordPress, WordPress plugin called, um, I just had it, WordTwit. WordTwit. So W O R D T W I T. You install that plugin and configure it. And you can say what time of day, how often to retweet it or whatever. When you make a blog post and that blog post goes live, it will automatically tweet it. Does it work similarly with calendars? No. That's, calendars are a totally different animal. So, these are all the posts recently that were done with the hashtag create now in them. Some by me, some by Adobe, some by other presenters. And that's, that's the way you find things on Twitter. Because otherwise, you'll never, you're never going to find a tweet that's not tagged. Unless you're going through a specific person's tweets to find it. Is that me? Okay. Go ahead. So Twitter, like I said, is about following and being followed and what people just have to say. It's not any of the, all the other stuff that Facebook is about. So that's why a lot of people, notice, by the way, notice the difference. On my Facebook fan page, I have 10,000 followers. On Twitter, I have double that. Now, does that mean that more people are on Twitter than Facebook? No, it's the opposite. There are more people on Facebook than there are Twitter. But people tend to use Twitter for business more than they do Facebook. So that's why my business page has half as many people. Because people use Facebook more for personal than they do business. A few years ago, NBC News reported on the night that Osama bin Laden was killed that some individual tweeter in, in the, the little city where, where he was was tweeting about helicopters flying around late at night. Now, how would NBC News know that? They're not following this guy. He's just some lonely guy in, in uh, Afghanistan. How would NBC News know Depends on what hashtag he used. Mm -hmm. yeah. He just made up a hashtag? Hashtags are all made up. They're whatever you want to say. 
What's your name? What's my name? Yeah. So I could do um, great tip from Rick. Hashtag Rick. If I'm automatically searching for anything that says Rick, that's going to come up. If I'm automatically searching for Afghanistan, helicopters, wh whatever, and that stuff's going to come up. There are plenty of applications that also track things that are friendly. All right. So exactly. One of the most popular hashtags are anyone looking for them. So I just made up a hashtag called Rick. Anyone looking for that hashtag is now going to find that tweet. He might have used the hashtag Afghanistan and NBC. He might have used, right. Osama. Exactly. Anything like that. And they're just automatically, constantly looking for any tweets that have that stuff in it. Right. By the way, speaking of trending, here are the, here are the hashtags that are trending right now. Didn't say they were good. They're just tw tr trending. Now, during the Super Bowl, what hashtags do you think were trending? Power outage, <laughs> Ravens, 49ers, all the things that you would think, Doritos. All right, those were the things trending during the Super Bowl. And if you were to click on one of those hashtags, you'd see all the tweets about it. Um, those could be, um, I don't know. These could be just, just words that are being used quite frequently that are showing up, even though they don't have the word, the hashtag in front of them. So that's Twitter in a nutshell. Um, I find that I talk more on Twitter than I do Facebook. Because it's simple. Just go in and say something. Click tweet. Done. Someone wants to respond, they can. I, rare, I, I do probably Twitter twice as much of me talking than I do on Facebook. Yes. Her question was tweeting and retweeting the same as pinning and repinning on Pinterest. And the answer is yes. Okay, so now, um, we talked about Facebook, we talked about Twitter, we're going to wrap things up real quick with the last few. Google Plus, a combination of both. On Google Plus, you don't have friends. You follow people by adding them to circles. But you don't have to request it, they can just add someone. They don't have to say yes or no. People post status updates, but you can also have photo albums. So you can have pictures. So it's, it's literally like they said, best of Facebook, best of Twitter, make a, make a site. Took all the annoying things off Facebook that people don't like, don't put it on their new one. Take all the things that people do like, put it on their new one. But they just didn't grab the hearts and minds of people. And I, it's weird that they didn't. But it's got to be a lot more specialized. Example, photography. Yeah, there are, like, I think Scott Kelby, for example, has some insane amount of followers on Google Plus because there are a ton of photographers here. Here, let me go to Scott's. Scott has 1.6 million followers on Google Plus. More than he has on Twitter, more than he has on Facebook combined. He does now. And, uh, and it's like you said, for some reason, Google Plus, and it was probably the privacy, or not privacy, but the uh, usage rights of photo in their terms of service was more photographer friendly to where photographers gravitated to Google Plus. And so, you're right, also quality of the photos that are posted. And you also have the other thing that's very popular are the interactivity hangouts. Yeah. Now, let's say you think all of this is childish for kids, don't care, don't need it. Then I, say, I throw back at you LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the social network for grown-ups. <laughs>
This isn't about friends and hanging out and what you did for lunch and all that. This is about work. It got its claim to fame as people that were looking for work would go to LinkedIn, create an account, post their resume so potential employers would find them. That's really how it got popular. And, and uh, I can't take credit for this joke, but a friend of mine did a social media class and I walked in on the tail end of it because of my class was starting right after and he said, I don't know, whenever I see someone pop up on LinkedIn, I think, I just instinctively think, oh, so-and-so needs a job. Oh my God, what I wonder what happened. It, because that's traditionally what LinkedIn was for. You never went on there unless you were looking for a job. But it, is, it has come a long way. I'm still not a huge LinkedIn fan because I'm not looking for a job or looking to hire anybody. But it, it, they've got communities on here now and forums and they're trying to be not just a job network. They're trying to be more of a professional network. They've had a recommendation. Recommendations, right, yep. So uh, I look at LinkedIn as still kind of a thing for jobs because it is more about your career. But it is certainly, if you said Facebook, Twitter, all that's for kids and childish and I don't need any of that, and you're looking for a professional social networking site to talk to other professionals in your industry, I'd say go to LinkedIn. Even if you're not looking for a job. But if you're looking to make contacts in the business world, this would be the place to go. Well, the difference is, as opposed to just looking for a position, you may be looking for additional business. Right. That's what I mean. So you're looking for anything business related, I would say go to LinkedIn. Now, YouTube. Funny story about YouTube. Before I had, before I started really doing anything on YouTube, I have, I have and had, ha, have had my own podcast. I've had my own podcast since 2007. It's on the Apple iTunes store. It tends to rank pretty highly. Uh, let's go take a look. I haven't looked in a while. And it's something that I was back in the day attempting to do uh, at least once or twice a week. And then it went to once a week. And then it went to when I had time. Why isn't the sidebar showing? Oh, because I didn't show the slide bar. There we go. And if we go to podcasts, and we go to technology, and we go to. Da -da 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 -da. Software how to. Yeah, I'm very decent here. Here we go. Oh man, I'm the top ten anymore. You better go back to the top Yeah, definitely. Oh, but here I am. I'm still in what's hot. Hey, I don't mind being hot. All right, so I'm in the what's hot. Let's see where I am in the top. Oh, that's top episodes, top podcast. Here we go. Dang, just number 12. Fell out of number 10. Okay, so anyway, uh, last time I checked, I was at five or six. So it varies. goes up and down based on popularity, and I haven't posted anything yet this week, so that explains it. But I've been doing that for 2007, staying relatively in the top, let's say, 20 since then. Every week. Popular. Thousands and thousands and thousands of downloads. Then it dawned on me, the same concept of People don't wake up to go to your website every day. People don't wake up to go find me on iTunes every day. So I thought, if I'm spending 30 minutes, an hour, two hours making a video, and I'm doing it kind of for free, shouldn't I want that video viewed by as many people as I can get it viewed by? I'm doing the effort, the video's done, why not post it in more places? So I did an experiment. It was kind of one of a new, like a New Year's resolution. My New Year's resolution for that year was two words, be everywhere. 
That was my motto for the whole year. Be everywhere. Don't think about, don't get locked into your traditional ways of doing things. Go over here, try this. Go over here, try that. Be everywhere. That's when I really started getting on most of the social media sites with a, with a vengeance. So, I started posting my videos on YouTube. I now have over 43,000 subscribers and over 11 million views. Same videos, but to a bigger audience. My podcast to date since 2007 has had 25 million downloads total. This is 11 million in a couple of years. Really in one year, to be honest, but let's say two. So at that rate of growth, it will, is really technically I already surpassed my podcast in terms of people that download it or look at it here versus iTunes. But it's growing exponentially. I heard if you have over like a million views on YouTube, you get, you get paid. You don't have to have a million views on YouTube. You can have one view on YouTube to get paid. You can put ads on any video on YouTube with an, with an affiliate account. You make a lot more money if you have a million views, but you, uh, you can start getting paid immediately. Are all your archives of all of your previous uh, tech things on YouTube? For the last couple of years, I didn't go back and put old ones on there. But everything I started doing from that point on is now on there. How effective? <laughs> go ahead. Do you prefer YouTube to Vimeo? Yes. Now, good question. Do I prefer YouTube to Vimeo? I said yes without even questioning it. Why? It's where everyone is. Vimeo is be better, arguably better quality. That's where the pros are. This is where everyone is. <laughs> and so I, I did a quick experiment posting the same videos on Vimeo 2 and that be everywhere year. And it was just the, the number of views was minuscule. It just wasn't worth the effort. I could, if I had an automated way of doing it, I probably would, but it just, uh, the time it took me to upload it just wasn't worth doing. Now I may have changed. I have to go look at Vimeo again. No. YouTube's completely free. How do you get seen? How do I get seen? Same way. You have to build your network by posting videos that people want to see, tagging the videos so they're easily found. Because when you post a video, you can put in tags of what the subject matter is. Um, and making, you know, if, if other people start linking to your video and embedding your video, the more popular your video will be. Now, speaking of getting paid, my videos do have ads. If you go to play one of my videos, it will probably start off with a five second ad, or an ad that you can skip after five seconds if you don't want to watch it. Here's the ad. I don't control what the ad is. I can control what the ad's not. I can list specific companies that I don't want to advertise on my, on my feed. But that Disney ad right now is playing. Sure, you can advertise with Google all you want. You're going to pay, but yeah. <laughs> you can integrate it into your video. Yeah. No, no. I mean, if you want your, your, your business to be on other people's videos, sure, you can pay. All right. So the ad played, that was, I'll get a little bit for that, but had someone actually clicked on it, I get a lot more. And nice try. Uh, <laughs> Now, I am at some point, yeah, it's definitely taxable. You're going to get a 1099 for it. I'm at some point looking to retire. Sure. You know, not next year, not the year after, but at some point. And part of my strategy for retirement is to have built such a following that by the time I'm ready to retire, that all I have to do is tech writing and videos. And it will supplement all my other retirement income. So there's a method to this.
It's not just for fun. It's not a want to, you just set it up. Yeah, you, when you create your Google account, matter of fact, I think it's even part of the setup process now to ask you, do you want ads or not? And you put in your financial information, obviously, because they have to pay you. So once you set that all up, um, you'll start seeing reports on the revenue that your videos are generating. Kelly? Do they have to look at the old ads? Um, I haven't figured that out yet. I think you get a little something if they just look at the first five seconds, which I force. Uh, <laughs> but I don't, of course, again, it's not that much if they only look at the first five seconds and then skip. More if they look at the whole thing, much more if they click. I always look at it as businesses like Disney and all these other ones wouldn't pay all this money to be on here if it wasn't making them something. And they're generating, by, they're looking at the reports of the clicks. How many people actually went to click to look at whatever that product was being advertised? So they're getting reports. How many podcasts do you have on YouTube? I have, well not just podcasts, I have, I think I just hit 200 videos. Now, guess what my most popular video is? Over 2 million views. And it's embarrassing to me right now <laughs> that it's that video. It's not Photoshop. It's not Adobe related. It's a, st and here's, this is, this is, I was on WJR yesterday with Calvin and the question uh, the, the moderator asked me is, hey, when is Apple going to have the next big thing? If Apple knew when the next big thing was, it'd be one, one big thing every week. You never know what your next big thing is. You never know what that viral video is going to be. So I had no plans of that particular video being a two million, my most popular viewed video ever when I, when I made it. It was a dumb little thing I did. Are you gonna show us? Yeah, go ahead and embarrass yourself. Well, it's embarrassing now because I do a much better job of it. Um, I don't know, because again, I'm not logged, am I logged? No, I'm not logged in as me, so it might be hard to find. Search channel, there we go. It is my video. Most little cameras are very decent right now. Uh, where is it? That one works great. It's just at a weird angle. I don't like using it because it's at the angle of your, the lid of your Mac. If it's not a, a desktop. Anyway, uh, here, let me see. What about the audio? Do you use the built-in mic or do you always use an external? I always use an external. All right, if I don't find the video this way, I'll tell you which one it is. Yeah, I can't find it this way. Okay, let's do a regular search. Let's see. Oh, that's right. It was called Must Have. That's why I couldn't find it. That looks like it. You pose one two above that. Oh, sorry, three million. Three million four hundred thousand views. <laughs> the iPad had just come out. There were only 15 or 20 apps that day. I mean, you know, maybe 100, it might have been more than that. But there were so few apps that I literally went and picked 10 that I thought were okay. And I recorded a video on, hey, here are 10 must have apps for your new iPad that had just come out. Which one of the apps crashed in the middle of the video because it was just, <laughs> just, it just wasn't that great of a video at all. But people go search for must have iPad apps on YouTube or on Google and my video comes up and they play it and I get another view. 
3.4 million views on a video that I never ever thought you think I would I would have done a, such a high quality production job on a video that I thought was going to go viral as opposed to the one that ended up going viral and every time you click on something I get I smile a little so <laughs> All right, yeah, so you can't plan viral, it just happens. All right, we're out of time. Uh, I will just throw two more at you. Flickr, and actually, if you're a photographer, you want to look at Flickr and 500px.com. Uh, 500px is my favorite one just from an inspiration, quality of photo, just amazing photography site. And people post there all the time, every day, just great photos. Flickr is more of the social networking aspect of photography. It's, the old, it's one of the oldest ones. Um, you can post galleries, you can have contacts or friends, if you want to call them that. Um, you can, it, and Flickr is probably more integrated with other things, like you can set up Flickr on your Apple TV and see photos from your friends on your Apple TV or your photos. So I like Flickr from the technology standpoint. I like 500px from the, oh my God, those are incredible photos standpoint. And last but not least is a fairly new social networking site called Pinterest. Pinterest is kind of one of those, it's about pictures, but it's more of a bulletin board kind of thing where you create boards of various topics so like I if we go to mine here I've got all kinds of cool boards I think so I have my favorite gadgets I have apps I can't live without books worth reading mine of course um, <laughs> most popular videos because you can't post video links as well um, style um, funny things rare photos so this one's kind of cool where I just where anytime I find a rare photo I can post it now when I say can post it, the thing that photographers were ticked off about with um, Pinterest is there's nothing stopping anyone from posting your copyrighted photo if they can find it on the internet. Because you're literally just posting a link to a photo that's already out there. Yeah. And so you're posting his photo on your Pinterest board because he's, he's got it on the internet. And you can grab the link and post it. So photographers hate Pinterest. So I don't post photography on Pinterest, but I just post cool things. So in this uh, board of rare photos, if you ever wanted to know what the um, first McDonald's looked like, there it is. If you wanted to know what, um, let's see here. I just thought this was an interesting photo. They use cow. Sh they use shoes that look that left cow footprints in the prohibition years to hide their tracks. <laughs> so just I look at Pinterest as pinning things of interest. That's what it is. Just post interesting things. I hope you got something out of today. I know it's kind of all over the place in some respects, but. So it's so familiar.